gonna show you how to find rate of change. And when finding rate of change, um, what we're doing is, all we're doing is we're finding the change between one quantity over the change of another quantity. So it's kind of a ratio of changes. So what we're looking at is here we have quantity of time. So time goes in three, six, nine, as the height changes as 20, 40, 60. So what I want to do is I want to find well, what is going to be the rate of change all right, between these. So what is the change in my top quantity compared to the change in my bottom quantity? So a lot of times we're talking about slope. Remember, we were talking about the change in my x values compared to my change in my y values. Uh, I'm sorry, the change in my y values over the change in my x values. Well, here we're going to be doing the exact same thing, but we don't have any x's or y's. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the change in one quantity over the change of another quantity. All right, and um, when doing this, what a couple things we need to look at is we're going to look at our change in y over our change in x. And one thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is looking at what is going to be our um, independent and our dependent variable. All right, and that is going to change a little bit on your slope. So one thing is, uh, you know, if we look at this. Here is going to be my independent variable. The time is independent, and my height, though, is going to depend on the time. So here's going to be my independent, which is kind of like my x, and here's my dependent, which is kind of like my y. Here, my weight is independent, it's, but the cost is going to depend on the weight. All right? So therefore, to find the change, what I can do is, remember, change is going to be, uh, to find change, what you're going to want to do is you want to subtract two quantities. Now, it doesn't matter what two quantities you're going to want to subtract. Um, I would just pick consecutive ones though, right next to each other. So to find the change in these two quantities, I'm going to do 40 minus 20. You obviously could do 20 minus 42, but when you're doing it the larger the smaller, you're going to get rid of usually your fraction or your negatives. So I'm going to do 40 minus 20. You have to make sure that you do it the same on the top. 40 minus 20 is the same thing as 6 minus 3. So that's the change in y over my change in x. So 40 minus 20 is going to give me 20. 6 minus 3 is going to give me 3. So therefore, the rate of change for this um, function over here is going to be 20 over 3. For here, the rate of change, again, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to find the change in my y which will be 16 minus 8 over the change in my x, which will be 22 minus 11. So 16 minus 8 is going to give me 8 over 22 minus 11 is going to give me 11. So the rate of change for this problem would be 8 over 11. So that's how you find the rate of change. It's very simplistic. Okay? All you really do is first you, know, you want to determine what is your independent and your dependent variable. Remember, your independent variable doesn't depend on anything. Your dependent variable depends on the other variable. Uh, so once you figure out what your independent and your dependent are going to be, you just need to find the change in them. And to find the change, you're just going to take two values, preferably consecutive, you know, right next to each other, although it doesn't really matter. I could have done 60 minus 20 and 9 minus 6, and I still would have got the exact same rate of change. But then you just subtract them, find their values, and then write them as a, um, you know, as your ratio. And that's all road rate changes. It's just a ratio. All right, that's it.